What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher from The Duran, and I have with me Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. And today we're going to be talking about South Africa. All right, Peter, uh, South Africa has been thrust into the spotlight, into the mainstream. I would say that there was a lot of alternative uh, broadcasters and YouTubers who were talking a lot about South Africa. Lauren Southern did an excellent documentary on it called Farmland. You had Stefan Malinu, who did um, a lot of work out South Africa, a lot of reports on South Africa. And suddenly you have Tucker Carlson talk about it on Tucker Carlson tonight. And the next day... A very short segment. A Just very a short very segment. short segment. A very short segment. And the next day, President Trump sends this tweet, and I'll read out the tweet. I have asked Secretary of State Pompeo to closely study the South Africa land and farm seizures and expropriations and the large-scale killing of farmers. And in quotes, he has, South African government is now seizing land from white farmers at Tucker Carlson at Fox News. What is your take on what is going on in South Africa? Because to me, and, and then I want to hear your take. I, I, I look at this and I see it as a glimpse into what's awaiting much of Europe and the United States as far as reparations go and as far as the whole concept of equality of outcome. And I see these two themes yep. encapsulated in what's happening in South Africa. What do you, what do you think of the situation? Peter? Well, yeah, well, okay, L let's look what's happening to what, uh, um, uh, farmers in South Africa. They're called the Boer, and that's the, the, wor the word Boer is Afrikaans for farmer. Um, yes, um, uh, white farmers uh, control upwards to about 80 percent own, I should say, own 80 percent of uh, the farming land in South Africa. Um, these farmers feed South Africa. They are critical. Now what you have is the ANC um, is saying that it will ex expropriate without uh, compensation. Um, when Nelson Mandela uh, came to power through the, the deal that was made to end apartheid, um, certain it was it, it was um, acknowledged and uh, agreed um, there would not be this type of expropriation. Um, we had a test case. I don't know where it stands right now, but two farms were um, uh, the government approached them to buy them uh, at 10 percent of their value. Uh, I've read one report that um, the, the two properties have been seized. Another report I came across saying that has not been done yet because the author was uh, offer was rejected. Now, what you what you have now is um, complete Ill illegality. Uh, and not only are these farm murders underreported in South Africa, they're grossly underreported in the West. And the Western media doesn't want to hear about it because, well, that's not what the ANC was all about. This is the rainbow nation. Uh, um, uh, racism was apartheid, not the new South Africa. After pr uh, Trump tw uh, tweeted that, the South African government called in the American ambassador to South Africa to explain himself. See, this is the one good thing we got going for. The South African government is terrified of bad publicity. OK, so uh, this is a message to the South African government. Get scared because we're going to stay with this topic now. What is the argument the ANC made? I mean, let's remember, the ANC is a communist organization. That is their origins. The, the Soviet Union trained them, funded them, gave them an ideology. So uh, they, they, what, what is happening here is that during the Mandela period, they put on a mask for the West to be good liberals with Western values, uh, uh, racial equality, rule of law, all of that. Well, that is a sham right now. It's a sham. Okay. What, are they, what is the argument for expropriation without compensation? Well, they stole the land. That is historically not true. A great deal of the land was just there for the taking. South Africa is a big, big place. In other instances, the land was bought from African tribes. In some instances, and this is a minority experience, it was taken by force. And from what I have understood, some of those lands who were taken by force were actually adjudicated back to the original owner. So let's, let's focus on the forced seizure of land. Well, how did the African tribes of South Africa get the land, Alex? Through use of force. 
So you cannot blame these settlers. Some of these settlers own farms in existence before the United States was even a country. Before the United States was a country, you have families farming this land. This land is difficult to farm. There's not much water. Yeah. There's a lot, and it's capital intensive. Now, what's going on? Um, compens- uh, seizure without compensation. What are the implications of this? And we'll get to the equality of outcome issue in a second. What are the implications of this policy? Number one, the farmers will not uh, uh, do not want to sell their lands for a pittance. Okay, they uh, and farming because it's capital intensive in South Africa, you have to take out a lot of bank loans. So a lot of these farmers are are indebted to what degree or another is a different question, but they are in debt to these banks. Okay, so if who's going to want to buy these farms, even if they wanted to sell at a price, because then the government can still take it away from you. So. Now these farmers have a hard time. They don't want to sell it for a pittance, but they might. They can't sell it for its own value because um, a new owner will be afraid. Mm-hmm. And I and some of these are black farmers too. That doesn't get a lot of airtime, even in, in this in this general story here. They're afraid of their property rights too. So what happens here is that if the land is just taken away, which it will be, I don't see any backtracking on this. There'll be more murders of farmers that won't get much media time. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have a crisis of agriculture, a big one, a big one. Then you're going to have um, an outflux of, uh, of, uh, of white South Africans. Uh, Russia has already made an offer. I think Australia has also. Australia, yeah. Um, and, and what's going to happen to this part of the banking sector? It's going to go belly up. That rem effect, that'll go ripple effect all through the economy. Now, who's going to farm these lands? From what I understand, from the research I've done, um, young black South Africans, those that are studying in, in uh, a university or some kind of uh, higher education school, about 3% of them are studying anything related to agriculture. Do they want to take over these farms? They want to live in the cities. So what's going to happen to these farms? What's going to happen to the agricultural sector to South Africa? What do they need? Massive aid then? This would be absolutely ludicrous. You have functioning farms that feed the country and more. And because of political ideology and racism, because that's what it is, racism against this small part of the population of South Africa. And this is this follows this ideology that uh, you must have uh, uh, Absolute control. Look for someone that is to blame for the the amazing problems of South Africa. Very high crime rate. Very high murder rate. The economy is in is in uh, 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 in tatters in many ways. And what do they want? The nice shining future of Zimbabwe. That's what they're going to get. What does what is Zimbabwe's uh, economic condition? Right up north. 90% unemployment. Their currency is absolutely worthless. They use foreign currencies for transactions. They don't use their own currency anymore. It's worthless because of what started in the early 2000s with land seizures without compensation. Grumpy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you make of, um, of this Julius Malema guy? This guy that's dressing up in these red outfits that has these communist symbols that he's waving around. And this is a guy that the left, the radical left, from the Washington Post all the way to MSNBC and CNN, this is the guy that they're championing. This is the guy that they're citing to get their facts from, um, that they're using to fact check. They're using his statements to fact check stuff. Vox the other day did it. He used, uh, they used his statements to fact check some stuff. Um, that Tucker Carlson said, that President Trump said, this guy is a scary, scary figure because he's outright talking about murdering uh, uh, yeah. whites in South, like outright talking about, let's Wait, just get rid of all of them, he's saying. Yeah, but that, that makes perfect sense with their ideological point of view. Let's look at their paradigm. It's very simple. I studied Marxism. Marx actually was a pretty good economist and he understood capitalism. But his name is being thrown around as if he understands about what socialism is. 
he doesn't. He never really talked much about socialism. It was left to people afterwards. And what the South Africans have here, they're using this Marxian paradigm for, uh, uh, um, let's say, a Western Marxist paradigm, the Frankfurt School and all those other jokers. Okay, who were the oppressed? The workers and the peasants, okay? And they are virtuous because of their oppression of, because of, uh, uh, by the capitalist classes. Okay, well, that kind of didn't work out because everybody in the working class wanted to get out of the working class and become right. middle class. Okay, Marxism just never got that one right. Okay, so, okay, let's forget economics because it's not about economics because they're looking at an Armageddon when it comes to economics. But here we go. Who are the oppressed? Okay, the ethnic minorities, primarily uh, uh, black South Africans. Who's the oppressor? The white farmers and because they are oppressors they have no virtue okay they are the oppressors and everyone else is their victim victimology this is what we have with the left's ideology here so there is no redemption for these oppressors and that is actually part and parcel of the ideology that comes out of the washington post and the c and cnn msnbc and the rest of them okay because they have guilt it's their fault well what is exactly their fault okay and do we fault uh, pe uh, pe uh people for what their uh, ancestors did I, I thought we got away from collective punishment okay and and that's even enshrined in the United Nations Charter, okay? Yeah. But no, and this is why Mr. Redshirt and the rest of them at the ANC get a free pass. But like I said in the beginning of our cast there, the South African government is very sensitive to that. Uh, and, and I'm sure they saw the Tucker Carlson clip. I mean, it was a really short thing. It was like, what, two minutes? It was yeah, really okay. short. Um, and, and, but they're very sensitive to their reputation, and they know, they know very well that if it catches on, people like us spreading the word, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna start facing pressure, all right? And I'm glad that, you know, <laughs> President Trump appointed Bolton because he watched this Fox. He, he, he made this a statement because he saw Tucker Carlson. It's really extraordinary what is happening right here. But, you know, all we hear, what do we get from the liberals? Let's listen. That's right. Yeah. Crickets. Crickets. Yeah. Crickets. Okay. So, you know, this is a very important thing, particularly if we use, I mean, it, it, it's something I remember as a college student. When I was at university, the, um, uh, um, the anti-apartheid -apart, uh, movement was very, very strong. The generation before me, it was Vietnam. My generation was apartheid. And the, the uh, divestiture and all that, the University of California got out of South Africa. There was a lot of pressure on a lot of universities, the same thing, and governments, all right? And, and, and I would, I'm uh, willing to say good things about Nelson Mandela. But as president, he sold out to the, uh, the neoliberals, the economy, and he let in to the public square, into the halls of power, the worst elements of the ANC, okay? And now they have power. And I have wa watched some of these the supporters. I mean, I don't know. Context is everything, but basically at a, a rally chanting for the death of people, I mean, that is not acceptable in my playbook, okay? The, the thing is, is that South Africa is on a nosedive to catastrophe if it does not respect the rule of law. I mean, what is wrong with the Washington Post and CNN and MSNBC? Can you at least agree on... The, the rule of law should be respected. They can't because they're blinded by their ideology. Yeah, and now that Trump tweeted about it, of course they're going to take the other side. And, you know, if, if Trump tweets for one thing, no matter how if, abhorrent, if, no matter if, how despicable if, the other if, thing is, they're going to pile on if, to it. If Trump could walk on water, they would say he's trying to put the shipping industry out of business. Yeah. <laughs> So, so draw parallels, Peter, between what's happening in South Africa and a lot of what is on the horizon in the U.S. and in Europe. And here's a statement from, uh, from South African President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, who wrote, and I quote, it's a short uh, statement. He said, land reform in South Africa is a moral, social, and economic imperative. And I find it interesting that it's moral and social. 
I'm sorry, land reform it doesn't have anything to do with those things, Adoko. Okay, and first, you, your first point of reference is the Constitution and references. Uh, I mean, there's eminent domain. I mean, you can use eminent domain to uh, acquire uh, uh, properties and capital, but that means compensation. It has to be market regulated and agreed Proper value. You just can't. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, I mean, this, the three points you just mentioned uh, don't mean anything to me. I don't understand what he's trying to talk about. Okay. There are laws. There are property rights. And uh, these people uh, have uh, uh, other civil rights as well. But to your reference here about, I mean, th this is this politics of equal outcome, equality of outcome. Um, and we see it on steroids in South Africa. And they're given a pass by the liberal media because of their, uh, of their support of uh, the anti-apartheid movement for Mandela. But they don't, want, they, they, don't, they, they don't want to be held responsible for the legacy of all of that. And that's what makes them cowards, okay? And they are cowards here. But what, again, it's going back to this victimology um, uh, 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 paradigm, is that people are identified as being oppressors, and they must, the oppressors must be oppressed for the good, the moral good, of others, okay? It doesn't, first of all, it's not moral. It doesn't, and, and economically, it's a disaster, all right? And, and so, but what was happening is that they continue down this path of identity politics. This is, and South Africa is just the perfect example of it. I mean, literally black and white. But, and this is why the West has a hard time grappling with what's going on in South Africa, because it, it does fit into their identity politics paradigm. And in a way, it doesn't may, may, may not justify murder, but it justifies not talking about these unfortunate incidences of uh, the trajectory of the post-apartheid South Africa. And that fits in with the liberals' ideology nice and fine. Why should you have sympathy for them? Of course, all these people have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea the condition of the South African economy. They don't know who these boars are, like I pointed out, and these farmers. Um, and what about their rights? Do they have any rights at all? Apparently not. And that is the poverty of liberalism today. You make exceptions, okay? It do, it, they don't matter in the scheme of things. That sounds like Mao, doesn't it? That sounds like Paul Pot, doesn't it? It does. Is this what's awaiting us in, in, in the West? Well, if we don't start reversing it, of course, I think it's, and this is the same kind of trajectory. I mean, you have the Sarah Jong. Over at the New York Times. Yeah. I, I mean, she understands the South African leadership really well, okay? Because she's a racist, and so are these leaders. They, they, they don't want to, you know, it, it depending. I mean, in some instances, I mean, some of the stuff that I've saw, seen on YouTube, they're pretty open about their racism. <coughs> yeah, white white privilege, <laughs> toxic masculinity, mansplaining. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that you hear is, is not so far removed from what this Julius Malema is is going out and preaching. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is here is that at the end of the day, this whole ideological approach doesn't benefit the majority in the West. Okay, and it, it, it actually it, it's asking everyone to concede to work against their own best interests. Um, South Africa. Um, this will probably uh, take place, this um, uh, annihilation of these farmers. I mean, from what I understand, the, the, you know, the police sometimes show up, sometimes don't show up, sometimes do look for the perpetrators of these really heinous murders. I mean, heinous. really, look at some of the details. It's just stunning. I mean, it's not going in there robbing the place and shooting people and leaving. No, these guys, in, a couple, in some cases, bring their lunch because they're enjoying torturing families, including children. It's really, uh, uh, it, it really, it, it, it can give you nightmares thinking about it, okay? And the silence of it all. I mean, again, they don't want to disrupt this, this uh, uh, rainbow nation because that's what the West wants. That's what they want to see for the world, okay? And what the rainbow nation is turning into a nightmare for minorities in South Africa. That's something the leftists can't admit but they're not going to change their, their uh, behavior because their ideology blinds them. Do, do you think that, that Trump is going to do something? Um, and if he does do something, do you, what, what, what practically speaking, now getting back to policy, well, practically, I mean, what, can, you know, what, what can the U.S. do or what could Trump do? You know, it's, it's really interesting. Um, if you look before 
tr- before and after Trump's tweet, his own State Department, you know, the spokesperson, she she really poured cold water on it. I mean, it's all this gobbledygook, you know, we support civil society and blah, blah, whatever, you know, all these these uh, buzzwords. Um, and that's his State Department. OK, so it's a good question you ask. Um, is he going to be monitoring it? Um, are we going to have people, courageous people like Tucker c- keep uh, his uh, eye on it? I hope he does, because he's the only one in the mainstream that I've noticed that's uh, 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 talked about it recently. Uh, so, I mean, I, I mean, Trump has a lot of power. I mean, he likes to sanction people. I mean, <laughs> he can get into the <laughs> sanction game there. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, he, he does have the power to do that. I, I think President Trump is being very courageous here, okay, because it's something that nobody wants to talk about. Just don't ignore it. Don't don't pay attention. Move on. Move on. So, but yes, I mean, Trump can. I mean, if he, if this gets to be a bee in his bonnet, he can be a nightmare for the South African government. And I think that, and the and if he starts pushing down this, then the media is going to have to react, and then we're going to have the uh, 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 black conservatives come out and they get, and, and it's just going to be another snafu, okay? Because black conservatives and other conservatives say, where's the rule of law, okay? And this is racism. So, I mean, Trump could open up a can of worms here if he pushes it, okay? But we both know that he's got an enormous amount on his plate right now. So you don't think that he's going to really go deep into this? It's... I would like him to. I would like him to. Um, but I, it depends, you know, it all gets down to allocation of resources and time. And, and can he allocate you know, or delegate someone that will be his uh, eyes and ears for him, okay? Because the State Department doesn't seem to really want to be his eyes and ears on this particular issue. So the, you think South African government, the ANC, is going to move ahead and, and expropriate the land, steal the land? I mean, yeah. that's all the word. It's, it's stealing the land. I mean, they're going to do it? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, if they, if they allow the, uh, these farmers to be murdered, what's going to stop them from not uh, uh, um, uh, appropriating the land without compensation? And, and of course, it's a, it's a, for, for their radical followers, yeah, it'll be some kind of victory, but then they're going to be importing food. <laughs> really? Really, and then the banking crisis that they. I mean, I I'd like to you know I was in banking. Okay, you you don't need the um the, the agricultural sector of the banking sector in trouble for a country that is an agricultural country. It's really bad news. Okay, yeah, and and that's going to be a ma- and and the the effects of that. You can have uh, massive refugees, people leaving the country. Uh, of course, when people get hungry, people get violent. All kinds of things can happen. And it's already a kind of volatile place. And the backdrop is, the backdrop is, is that a number, a number of public opinion polls in South Africa recently show that the country is remarkably not racist. Blacks are not racist. Whites are not racist. But there are fringes, and I would particularly say in the government's corner, that are incredibly racist, and they use it as a, as a political card to play. So uh, not only would you have an artificial man-made economic crisis, artificial man-made agricultural crisis, you have a uh, man-made artificial race relations crisis as well. Okay, And who controls the media? Okay, They're government-friendly. So, I mean, this is a recipe for a catastrophe that does not have to happen. The, the, there needs to be a, a conversation if there's going to be a imminent domain issue, because I would prefer to put it that way because it's under the, um, uh, uh, under the framework of uh, the rule of law. If there's going to be a political decision, and the whites are grossly in minority, um, then let's have a, a process of compensation through a certain amount of time where, where everyone can make the transition, where the farms aren't destroyed, they don't go follow, we don't have farms that are in bankrupt, um, we don't have farms that are, uh, have, uh, that are so disrupted that they would have enormous sums would have to be put into uh, uh, reinvigorate them. I mean, as usual, liberals don't think it through. They just do this through passion and ideology. It feels good to get rid of the oppressors. Yeah, but you could have an empty stomach, okay? And who knows all of the other consequential uh, problems that will result of that. If it's going to be a political decision to have these landowners removed from their land 
It has to be done legally through the courts in some kind of social consensus. That would mean compensation. We have to point out, too, is that a lot of South Africans, whites and uh, blacks, are working in the agricultural sector. It's re um, we're not, you know, I'm focused. We're focused on the farmers and their families, but there's a lot of people that work these farms and are paid. They're part of the economy. They're going to find themselves in big trouble as well. So, you know, this feel-good, ideologically driven madness has enormous consequences. Enormous, yeah. it, it's a, it's if a there's massive going ecosystem. If it's good, if it's, if it's going to be done, do it legally and do fair compensation. And uh, and uh, another point just came to my head. You know, a lot of South African white South Africans, they are uh, lower middle class. They a lot of them do want to leave. They can't afford to yeah. leave. They have problems finding work. They've moved into these old uh, townships that was part of where blacks used to live during apartheid. I mean, there's an, a shift going on here. Um, there's no sympathy for them right now. Uh, I understand from documentaries um, that they, a lot of them would like to leave. They can't. They have no money to leave. They're, they, they're in a dead-end situation. The government isn't helping. There are no handouts for them because they're the oppressors. Lower white middle-class people are oppressors, okay, in South Africa, apparently. Uh, on that note, and to close this segment, uh, about the people that did get the opportunity to leave, what do you make of uh, countries like Russia offering uh, these farmers land and, uh, and the ability to, to farm in Russia or in Australia, for that matter? Well, I can tell you, um, since the end of the Soviet Union, one of the most unsung um, uh, victory stories, success stories of, of post-communist Russia is agriculture. It's a great business here. You know, 30, 40, maybe less years from now, you know, we all talk about nuclear powers and nuclear posture. Well, in a matter of decades, they're going to say, well, Russia, the agro power, the, the um, uh, hydro power, water and food. Water and There's food. a lot of land, folks. There's a lot of land. And having experienced, committed farmers wanting to come to Russia – I can open my big arms and give you a hug. Come. We'd love to have you. We will make sure you get land as well and apply your expertise because South African farmers are some of the best in the world, the best in the world. Russia would love to have some of the best in the world farming their land. Come to Russia, please. And I hope the Australians will do it as well. The South African government got really ticked off by the invitation by uh, Australia ticked off by it, okay? It shows it's really sensitive. That's why we need to press, press, press this issue because they are media sensitive about this, okay? And we're going to have to make sure that all the liberal media turn red in the face with embarrassment because they're hiding this heinous events that are happening in South Africa, a country that they coveted during the 1990s hmm. and 1980s and Mandela and all of that, okay, fine. Live up to your moral code don't put it on pause don't go in reverse don't hide it confront it and if you did you might be able be part of the process of solving this by ignoring it you make it worse and you will be saving lives as well and that's important Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk thank you very much for a great discussion on what's unfolding in South Africa Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Duran shop, buy a t-shirt, help us broadcast shows like this to you. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very, very much. Until next time, take care.